Hello everybody, uh, Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video we're going to take a look at the ubiquitous Marshall JCM 2000 Dual Super Lead Head. Um, this one is in for service and we're just going to do an overview of it and we're going to follow along with the servicing and if that sounds like something you would be interested in, please do stick around. This is the DSL 100, which is the 100 watt version of the Dual Super Lead. As the name would imply, uh, the Dual Super Lead has uh, two channels, channel A and channel B. We have a classic gain channel, uh, which is kind of more like um, JTM 45-ish uh, kind of level of gain. And then you have the Ultra Gain, which uh, gets you more into sort of uh, JCM 800, 900 sort of territory. Uh, let's uh, turn the thing around, uh, pull the amp out of the chassis, and we will take a look at what the customer said was wrong and go from there. All right, here's the rear of the amp with the tube shield removed, and uh, we can see there's not a whole lot back here, but what is back here is uh, some pretty important stuff. First, we have the mains input, uh, a mains fuse, and an HT fuse. We will look at exactly at what these fuses uh, do in a little bit when we look at the schematic. We can see right here on the, um, I guess this is the serial number, yeah, that's what that is. 1997, they always put their, um, well, I say always, but at a certain point, I think in the 90s, Marshall started putting their uh, year of manufacture as the first four digits of the serial number. So 1997 is when this example was made. It looks like he's been using a 4 ohm speaker cabinet, which is unusual. It's unusual with Marshalls. Usually, because Marshall speaker cabinets are 16 ohms, so this is this jack will get used a lot. Um, if he's using two cabinets that are 8 ohm, that's when he would want to use 4 ohm. But that's that's selected right off the bat. I'm, I'm a bit suspicious that that's selected. His complaint on this thing was that, I think he said um, it was coming on, the tubes light up, uh, but nothing happens, no sound. So that tells me that one of these one of these fuses may have either blown, or we may have blown up uh, the power transformer winding, something like that, worst case scenario, or, or both, maybe a, a fuse blew because of a, uh, a winding actually hold the phone before we do anything else um, I was checking the fuses and sure enough this HT uh, fuse here is blown we're gonna check out a schematic and uh, I'll show you what that does that it's gonna give us some direction as to what we need to look at alright the difference between the mains fuse and the HT fuse is the mains fuse is on the primary side of the transformer uh, coming in from the wall and the HT fuse is on the secondary of the transformer and that's on the the main uh, power supply uh, winding so let's go up here okay see that HT right there there's a heater winding there's an HT winding and a bias winding uh, W5 is where I think that cycles in. Uh, let's see. No, that's 15. Well, whatever. The the fuse for HT is definitely on the uh, HT winding. That much is clear. So, um, so that usually is going to point to something. Um, you know, something on the main B plus line. Uh, maybe power tubes even. Um, something like that. Power tube bias, probably runaway bias, could cause that to happen. I think that's that's uh, common on these. Oh, I know it's common on these. Um, the biasing issues on these are often caused uh, because the boards become conductive around the the tubes themselves and cause the bias just to completely run away in in the amp. So we're gonna have to probably check that and do something about that if we discover that problem. So let's go ahead and pull the chassis before we do anything else and uh, see what might be going on. 
Okay, here we are inside this Marshall DSL 100. And you can see there's several boards in here. Uh, there's a big long board here up front with all the pots on it. There's a big main board uh, down there. Uh, there's a board on the back that has the uh, outputs and everything on it. Uh, there's another little board right here with the uh, mains socket and the two fuse holders. Um, each one of these boards uh, has its own page in the schematic. So if you're confused by a Marshall schematic, uh, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a separate uh, page for each one of these boards. Uh, like for instance, and you'll notice on the schematics they'll have the they'll have them numbered. Uh, this is JCM2-61-00 so that board will be labeled that. Uh, that board up there is labeled JCM2-60-00 uh, whereas that one was 61. This one is labeled something different. You get the idea. Uh, that'll help kind of sort, sort it out if you're troubleshooting one of these. So okay on to our problem. Here is the HT fuse right here. We have uh, W14, which is this yellow wire right here. Uh, let's see, where is it going? It's going over here to the to the switch, and that is the standby switch. That's what we expect to see. The other side of the fuse, you can see the trace under there, real pale, is going to this kind of pinkish uh, wire right here and onto the board, and that is going to W5. So I was right about that. That is W5. Uh, so that right there is going to be uh, going to the rectifier. So we'll have our rectifier and everything coming off of that. Now, I don't think we're going to have any problems with heaters of the tubes. Uh, that goes right along with what he was saying, that uh, the, the heaters would light up, but the amp wouldn't make any noise. So we're not looking for the heaters to be a problem, but it still could be a problem with the tubes themselves. So what I think I'm going to do here before I do anything else is probably... Uh, pop in a new fuse, uh, and unfortunately, I'm out of the fuse that this takes. This takes, let's see, this takes a T1A fuse, 250 volt. That's my blown one, the T1A. Uh, the only one I have that's a one amp that's this size is an F1A. That's a fast blow. So this is a slow blow and that's a fast blow. That's the only difference. Uh, putting a fast blow fuse in the place of a slow blow is okay because if anything it's going to blow quicker so you're just basically risking the fuse and nothing else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this fast blow fuse in. I'm going to dial it up slowly on a Variac to a very low voltage, maybe even halfway up, something like that, uh, so we can kind of get some readings. All right, so let's jump straight into the nitty gritty here. Let's uh, find out what this thing's doing uh, and dial it up on the Variac. We'll pay attention to our voltages here. Let's turn the light on on this thing, make it easier to see. So, first things first, we'll dial it up just a little bit. And what I have here are my probes on uh, one side of that HT fuse and the other one to ground. So we're going to be checking voltages. Okay. Hmm. We're getting nothing. Completely dead. <laughs> okay. I didn't even have the thing plugged in. <laughs> oh man, it's just been one of those, one of those nights. I've got a cold. My head feels like it's a million times its normal size. So, okay. Oh yeah, we're getting a little bit of something here already. Um, let's see, let's dial it up a little bit, and yeah, we're getting something. So the HT winding on the power transformer is good. So, so that answers that question, whether or not our power transformer is good, and it should be, because he did say that the filaments were lighting up, and uh, since the HT fuse was blown, that would have been our only real fear, was that that power transformer... Uh, HT winding would have been um, would have been dead so that's obviously not the case because we're getting some voltage um, let's dial it up on a little bit more all right I've dialed it up just a little bit more uh, where we have about 148 volts 
on the secondary uh, on the HT winding and we have 78 volts on the input on the mains and we're at uh, about three quarters of an amp there I don't want to exceed this very, by very much because that HT will, will blow um, we've got the tubes conducting and we're getting sound so that's a good sign that means our output transformer is good that means that our tubes are all probably good because they're conducting uh, and that would go for the preamp and the power amp because uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't be doing that otherwise all right this is something interesting though when I switch over to the clean channel I was on the the ultra gain channel and, and that one's that one's obviously okay I switch over to the clean channel I have to crank them all the way up I can just barely you just barely make something out but even cranked all the way up I'm just getting nothing on that channel so all right I have my probe hooked up to the output transformer um, primary and that's basically gonna tell us what the voltage is on the output tubes uh, the plates and just one of the one of the sides is 357 uh, volts so that's probably about right for the 90 volts I have going in you see there are 0.95 amps it does seem to be drawing a little bit more than it uh, than it seems seems it should um, but on the other hand I don't it no that's probably not true it's probably about right but I am concerned that this fast blow fuse is probably gonna blow if I turn it up much more than this uh, but what the hey let's go ahead and do it you only live once I'm gonna have to change it anyway so um, and I can't do that tonight so um, whatever I do it's gonna be pretty much the end of the end of this for the evening so let's go ahead and dial it up a little bit and see what happens as of right now um, all the tubes are still glowing everything is stable uh, actually this first channel does work as well after I dialed it up just a little bit more uh, that first tube started conducting I think a little a little better so it's uh, you can definitely tell that the first channel is okay so we don't have a problem with channel one let's go ahead and dial this up and see what it does Okay, something happened there. Something kicked in is what it was. Okay. I think one of our relays kicked in. And without that it wasn't gonna there we go. Now we're getting good volume. That's that's why. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so that makes that makes some more sense. That's why that uh, that channel was so quiet. Okay, 425 volts on our plates. And we're nearing the full voltage here. Getting darn close. All right, we're at full voltage and we're only about uh, one and a half amps. I think the the fuse on the the mains is what two amps something like that so that's probably about right so let's see I don't see any red plating or any obvious signs of something going wrong with the power tubes at least nor with the preamp tubes so huh and you know I also don't see I just don't see anything obviously wrong on this this board like I might have expected you know something burned or you know something associated with a, a fuse blowing uh, a lot of times that can be pretty obvious 
Um, but I, and I'll tell you what, I've had one of these in before where uh, this switch uh, was, was, I believe, at fault. Because if you, if you try to switch this switch, this is the impedance switch for the output. If you try to switch this, you have to press in kind of, and if you press in too far, you, you end up breaking solder joints. And I've seen that happen too on these. So what I like to do is put a little bit of uh, silicon uh, right there along that top edge, and that just kind of helps hold this in. Um, but yeah, man, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like anything is wrong with this. 467 volts on the plate. Um, I don't know. Let's mess around with it a little bit, keep it cooking, and see if I can make it fail. Alright, I've been playing this thing for probably about a half an hour, and... So yeah, I just can't find any fault with this thing, so I, I don't know. Alright, so it seems this is a perfect example of uh, what's bad for a YouTube video is good for the customer. So uh, it was nothing but a, an, H, an HT fuse. Uh, I'm going to send this back uh, with the fuse that's the wrong fuse for now because I don't have the right one. I'll advise the customer on what to get as far as a fuse goes. Um, and I'll go ahead and check the bias and everything while, while I've got it open and make sure it's just, you know, as close as it needs to be. Um, I'm sure it is. It, it, the voltage is at least looked right. So, yeah. So, I don't know. That That's pretty much it. So, thanks you guys for watching. And for now, y'all take care.